personnel that can begin to join along with us. And we've got what we need to do that. And so we're praying for this morning. God bless you, those of you who are coming in on the stream this morning. We apologize for the technical difficulties. Our team is working feverishly uh, to be able to connect persons in and to give them the opportunity uh, to connect with us. But we've been walking through this series on the footprint. Somebody say footprints. Footprint. To follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Yeah, our memory verse on the screen behind me, Psalms 16 and 11. Let's look at it together. We'll say it on three. Psalm 16 and 11. Come on, one, two, three, go. You will show me the path of life. And in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. One more time. You will show me the path of life. Go ahead. In your presence is fullness of joy. Uh -huh. At your right hand. Our pleasures forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. Come on. I would if you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, as we always do. Somebody say, he'll fix it. He'll fix it. Yeah, Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. It won't be on the screen behind me. Wrong passage of text is there. But those of you who are watching at home, and if you've got your Bible, go ahead and turn to the book of Matthew chapter 3. I want to read to you verses 13 through 17. Don't focus so much on the screen behind me. Wrong text is there. But it's a great thing when you've got your tablet, your device or your Bible inside where you can turn appropriately. Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 through 17. Last week, uh, it's been an interesting thing. During this, set, uh, this season of Lent, the Lord has led me to talk about the birth of Jesus. And the reason why is that from the life and the birth of Jesus we find the footprints of Jesus that give us the principles and the patterns for living. Can you say amen? The principles and the patterns for living each and every day. And it's a strange thing that the Lord would lead me in this direction uh, simply because God wants us to be able to model who he is so that we can now live life in this temporary existence full of faith and manifest the kingdom. Amen, somebody? Amen. And so in last week's message, we looked at how Jesus and John, both miracle babies, had a moment to meet in the womb and their imprint uh, really began to talk to us and to show us uh, that God can perform miracles out of places where things seem to appear to be barren. Amen. And that's a part of God's footprint. Somebody say he'll fix it. He'll fix it. And what we find is that both Jesus and John were cousins and that both of their mothers had miracle moments of an experience that connected them uh, together in terms of their call and purpose of life. Which is to say God can perform miracles in your life. Yes, he can. Uh, that you will begin to manifest God's moments. And so this morning we're picking up the second half of the story in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 13 of this series and the footprints to follow Jesus. We believe that if we follow his footprints, we'll gain principles for living each and every day. Somebody say he'll fix it. He'll fix it. I'm going to begin reading at verse 13. Let your eyes follow along with me. Go ahead and get to the title screen, dear, and we're going to ride through this this morning. The Bible says that Jesus came from, from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. Somebody say he'll fix it. He'll fix it. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, permit, per, permit it to be so now for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him, verse 16, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Look at somebody on your left or on your right, or maybe perhaps the row behind you still practicing social distancing. Say these words. Say, neighbor, neighbor. He'll, fix he'll fix it in your family, in your family. If, you would but follow if you would but follow the footprints, the footprints of, Jesus. of Jesus. Come on, say, neighbor, neighbor. He'll, fix he'll fix it in your family if you would but follow, would but follow the footprints of Jesus. 
Somebody type that on the screen. He'll fix it. He'll fix it. He'll fix it. Come on, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. That, uh, Father, that you haven't changed your mind about family. Uh, that you haven't changed your mind, God, about us modeling you in the earth and being mentored by you for the purposes of your movement. God, we thank you for what you are doing, even though it looks to the naked eye that there's trouble uh, all around us. God, you're at work just as you were on that Passion Week way back when in the days when you brought the children of Israel out of bondage. You put them together in houses and in families and you put the blood upon the doorpost when the death angel came. In this Lenten season, Lord, keep the blood on the doorpost of every family and the trouble that we think we're seeing. God, you're at work to produce miracles that we do not know of. And so, Father, speak now in this word. Hide me in you so your people only hear your voice and experience your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell somebody he'll fix it. He'll fix it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, I want to talk to you from the subject matter this morning, a family affair. A family affair. I will simply, simply say, God bless you and great morning, Dominionaires. Good morning. Come on, God bless you and good morning, Dominionaires. We're walking well into our next installment of the footprints to follow Jesus. We have already said that we believe that following the footprints of Jesus gives us principles and patterns to follow for living. And our memory verse for us makes it real clear, real plain for us in Psalms 16 and 11. The Bible says, you will show me the path of life and in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Stop, somebody type in and somebody say he'll fix it. And what we just experienced in our viewership of a relational commentary about the family matter between one of our heroes in gospel music, Kirk Franklin, and his 33-year-old son is indeed a family affair. Can you say amen? I thought it was interesting how the dynamics of the audio and its verge seemed to spark so much interest with all of us and so much vitriol as people took sides and took up camps on opposing sides from each other concerning what it was that we heard and what it was that we saw. And on the one hand, uh, there was this cancel culture, uh, cancel Kirk with its message of uh, Kirk is supposed to be a leader. He, he shouldn't have that kind of verbiage. And now let's cancel Kirk. I don't know where people get that from. But then there is the other side where there's this issue of little, let's have love and grace. And they have so much love and grace with this. There's no accountability. When in actually, I'm looking for the people who are on the Lord's side. Come on, somebody wave at me this morning. I'm looking for the people who are at the Lord, on the Lord's side and have no idea of how the Lord is at work in the middle of this situation. And if we all can get on the Lord's side, God can fix it. Come on, say amen if you can. What I'm simply saying is that God is shining the light on some dynamics and some situations. He was trying to get our attention by putting us in the quarantine so that we would have to dwell with each other, that we would have to be with each other, so that we would have to know each other, so that we could then come to a place of purity and begin to function the way that God wants us to function, so that, that we're not one way on Sunday morning and something different on Monday. Come on, somebody say, he'll fix it. If you know, like I know, all of us have issues in our families. There are frictions and there are fractions in our families. There will always be moments of conflict because although we tend to share the same last name and many of us share the same frame, all of us in today's time, we can tend to pass blame on other people. Come on, somebody say, let him fix it. Well, which is to say everybody that shares your skin ain't necessarily your kin. And you've got to let God fix it in the situations of your family dynamics. See, with the friction that we are seeing in the state of affairs in family dynamics, what we're seeing today is that we all need to be glad that we don't have microphones and cell phones and cell phone cameras and camera phones following us all around 24 hours a day and 
have all of us under surveillance because all of us have got some dynamics in our families with our affairs that need some fixing. Come on, say amen if you can. Oh my God, I'm trying to keep myself and just walk through this clearly. The reason that we all need some fixing is because each one of us, each one of us need fixing. Our families need fixing because we are in them. And ain't none of us perfect and we need some fixing inside of our families. Come on, say amen if you can. And I just got to say this right here, just to say, until you have raised children to be teens and teens to be adults in a postmodern to post-Christian relativistic age, you have no idea of the pressure many parents and grandparents are facing. Come on, somebody holler at me in here. You don't know what it is like in today's age, in today's time, trying to raise children and raise families and trying to lift up a godly standard because how many of you like, I know families are under attack. You've got no idea of the perverse, pervasive nature of our times in a postmodern and post-Christian matrix of trying to develop a sense of solidarity and faithfulness uh, before God. This is what this is what makes Christianity so hard. Come here, David and Arnold. I say being a Christian is not for the weak. It is not for those of us who are who are trying to move upward and onward in our relationship with God and trying to manifest righteousness and boldness. And just because we see to have mastered some competencies doesn't mean we have issues of character that can creep up from time to time. But just because we do doesn't mean that you got to throw everything away because somebody has a moment. Come on, say amen if you can. And at the same time, it doesn't mean that we don't strive for, that we don't live for, that we don't try to hold up the standard of the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. I said all that to say, let's ease up off of Kirk Franklin and his response and let's give his son some grace also. Amen. Somebody, somebody say, let him fix it. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise right there. Uh, we've got to let God be God. I don't know where we get off on trying to be God. Let God do his job and we do our jobs. Amen, somebody? Yeah, yeah. See, 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 the good news for us today is that God is a family man. That's what God's trying to communicate, I believe, is that God cares about family. And he hasn't changed his mind about family. As a matter of fact, when you break down the etymology of the word family, what you'll find is that in the Hebrew, the word family means father's house. Somebody say father's house. And when God chose Abraham to be the father of many nations, he did so not so but so much because of Abraham's ethnicity. Abraham wasn't even a Jew. He was from a place called Ur of the Chaldees, which would be the modern day Iraq. It wasn't because of Abraham's pedigree, if you will. It was because of the scripture on the screen behind me in Genesis 18 and 19. Watch what the Lord says. For I have no him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, here he is, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, here he is, that the Lord, somebody say that the Lord, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. God is a family man because he's trying to get righteousness and justice into the earth and God gets righteousness and justice into the earth through families and when fathers begin to teach and model and show families what it is that God intends for us in terms of how we ought to live. I know somebody watching this morning may have an issue with the word direct that the King James and New King James text of the scripture uses. So I thought I would bring the break it down version. Somebody say break it down, Pastor. Break it down, break it down. The break it down version is the New Living Translation. I brought that up this morning. God said about Abraham on the screen behind me, I have have singled him out. He says so that he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord, here it is, by doing what is right and just. Then God says, then I will do for Abraham all that I have promised him. Can I have a quick sidebar that's not in the manuscript this morning? Just a quick note to men, which is to say, brothers, if you want your prayers answered, if you want breakthrough to happen in your life, if you want moments to begin to turn around, begin to start to show and model and teach your family the way of the Lord to do what is right. 
When you begin to do what is right, we obligate God to come to our rescue. Come on, say amen if you can. And if we're going to fix the affairs of our family dynamics, we've got to do what is right. We've got to learn what is right. And we've got to walk in what is right in order to follow the footprints of Jesus. So now the question this morning, Eric, becomes how do I follow the footsteps of Jesus with all of what is going on in our family dynamics? How do I follow the principles and patterns of his person to handle and heal and make whole my family affairs? Beloved child of God, I'm glad you asked the question this morning because the first answer as a solution lies in, listen to this, the principle of baptism. The way that we are able to fix the dynamics in our family affairs as a solution, the answer really lies in baptism. To the degree that we can be submersed is to the degree that God can fix whatever is going on in our family dynamics. Can I say it a little bit better? The degree to which we come under is the degree that God will fix our families whether they come under or not. I can't get nobody to talk to me this morning. God ain't concerned about everybody else. He's concerned about you. Come on, say amen. Somebody say, come under. Listen, the word baptism is an interesting word in the text. It relates to a fixing a family affair. In the Greek, the word baptism is the word baptismo. It's Strong's G907 on the screen behind me. It means to dip repeatedly to immerse or to submerge. Somebody say dip, baby, dip. I gotta leave that alone. That's my, my hip-hop days right there. It means to come under and to submerge. Y'all to next people, y'all just smile and wave at me and say, bless his heart, bless his heart, bless his heart. It means to submerge and to come under. And if we're going to fix many of the family affairs of conflict and crisis, it's going to require, here it is, a daily and a fresh baptism. Tell somebody that will fix it. God can't really fix the dynamics of families until people and families decide that they're going to come under. Until they decide that they themselves as individuals, we too much spend too much time pointing the finger at everybody else. We got to look at our own self and work out our own self-salvation and say, Jesus, God, help me. Come on, somebody say amen if you can. See, here is the issue. Here is the issue, Mel. The issue is in most family, family dynamics, nobody wants to come under. Nobody wants to feel like everybody is trying to tell them what to do. Nobody is willing to yield and give preference to another. But without submersion, somebody say submersion. Somebody say come under. Without submersion and a coming under, it is difficult to follow the footprints of Jesus. And without following the footprints of Jesus, without following his footprints, we cannot find the path of life. And without the path of life, we cannot enter into his presence. Now the memory verse makes a whole lot more sense. The Bible says about David, if you will show me the path of life, in your presence is the fullness of joy here to shout and at your right hand. I don't know about y'all, but I want pleasures. So no matter how much I got to come under, no matter how much I got to defer, no matter how much I got to work on me, God, I want pleasures. Because, Lord, I want you to be lifted up. Hear, hear me now, church, hear me. The Bible says that Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I feel preaching now, I'll draw all men unto me. I don't think the issue with the world is the world. I think the issue with the world is us. And God wants us to get straight so that we can be the church for the world so that somebody can see the real Jesus. Somebody holler, let him fix it. See, 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 this is the crux of the issue for many. We often misunderstand our word, or we misunderstand submersion. Another reading for the word baptism is the word, the conjugated form, baptismo, or baptisto. Here it is. It means to cleanse by dipping. I'm sorry, I have to go back to him again. Somebody say, dip, baby, dip. Yeah, it means to cleanse by submersion. It means to wash, to make clean with water, to wash oneself, to Paid. And if we're going to fix family dynamics, Sister Connor, we're going to have to come under the power of the Holy Spirit and allow Him to cleanse and to wash us. To wash us of the psychological impacts of our lives. Somebody say, wash us. 
uh, to wash us of the spiritual, emotional, and economic and sexual trauma. Somebody say, wash us. If we will come under, he will wash us. What I'm saying this morning, if we come under the power of the Holy Spirit, the rape that we will experience, God will fix it. If we come under the power of the Holy Spirit, the renegade behavior that we see with our children, God will fix it. If we will come under the power of the Holy Spirit, the bad attitude, God will fix it. If we come under of the power of the Holy Spirit. God will deal with the issues of abandonment and loneliness. I'm trying to help somebody. If we will come under the power of the Holy Spirit to hear me today. Those of you that are watching, there's got to come a time where you can't point the finger at everybody else. you got to say, Lord, it is me standing in the need of prayer and God, I need the power of your Holy Spirit. I might as well go on the other side because nobody want to have church with me in here this morning. God, if you don't help me, I don't want to find myself in a jail cell because I done lost my mind because I done lost it and went off on somebody. God, if you will help me and I let your spirit try me and see if there be any wicked way in me because I don't want to have to straight hit somebody in the day and times because people done lost their mind. God, help me be in control of Somebody say, let him fix it. Well, somebody would help me preach this morning. Give the Lord praise right through here. God, help me in here. Listen, listen, the issue, can I give us the issue with coming under? The issue with coming under is this. Oftentimes, uh, we don't come under our family dynamics because we misunderstand two things. We misunderstand roles and responsibilities. Somebody say roles. And somebody say responsibility. Uh, oftentimes, we tend to focus on roles, here it is, without understanding responsibility. Come here, man. Oftentimes, we want to be in charge and be, get the big piece of chicken and the big piece of steak. I remember when I was a little boy, and uh, I would oftentimes play in the house, and I would stand in my father's shoes, and uh, he would quietly say, there's going to come a day when you're going to have to fill those shoes. And I couldn't walk in his shoes when I was five and six and seven years old. I'd be tripping up and falling through the house, uh, walking through his shoes, but at least there were some shoes for me to put my feet in. But as time began to grow, I began to understand what it means to stand in your father's shoes. And you can't stand in a real man's shoes until you understand responsibility. It is not about being in charge, but it's about being accountable because God's got to hold somebody responsible. Did you hear what the Bible said? The Bible said that God chose Abraham because Abraham would be faithful to tell his children and to tell his family what thus saith the Lord. And I think it's high time again, hear me, men, that we got to stand up in our households, whether people like it or don't like it. We got to stand up in families and say, This is the word of the Lord, and this is the way of the Lord. And I am the chief among sinners and be the first one to go low so Jesus can be lifted up high. I feel preaching in here this morning. If we'll get low enough, God will get high high enough and God will begin to fix all our family dynamics. Did you just hear what the Holy Ghost just said? If we will get low enough, God will get high enough and fix all our family dynamics. Somebody holler, let it fix it. Somebody give the Lord praise right through here. Listen, listen, this takes us to the second point. It takes us to the second point of the day because if he's going to fix our family affairs by following, when we follow the footsteps of Jesus, we're going to have to learn this dirty word, which is Donna, that nobody likes to say in church no more. We're going to have to learn this dirty word called submission. Somebody said that in fiction. I know, I know, I know, I know submission is a dirty word. and It, it is a most misunderstood word in the kingdom. When you break it down, sub, come under, mission, vision, focus, directive, goal, when we can come under the mission and vision of the kingdom of God, we then begin, can begin to operate in power. I would dare say that everything in the kingdom of God operates under the principle of submission. See, submission is designed, I'll say it this way, submersion is designed to clean you up, to give you a rebirth, to help you shake each and 
every one of us in terms of how we see the world. world. But now submission is a different thing. Submission places us in the position, the poise to access God's power. I got to say it one more time. I said submission puts us in the position where we are poised to access God's power. Oftentimes we don't have power of as believers through demonstration with instruction because nobody has come under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say come under. This is why I say submission is the key for us in being able to come under. Look at Jesus on the screen behind me. Matthew 28, 19 says and Jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority somebody say all authority all authority has been given to me here it is in heaven and on earth he then says to his disciples before his decision go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father son and in the holy spirit Jesus didn't even put his name in their birth he said in the name of the father son and of the holy spirit he said because I got authority you got authority and as long as you are in me and I am in the father and all of us are coming connected to him, there will be a pipeline flow of a glow that will show up in your life. God, help me in here. Luke 10 and 19, I'll give it to you better this way. Behold, I give you authority. Somebody say authority. As Pentecostal people, and I'm more Pentecostal than y'all, I will he caught that by he coming on a Hyundai in a minute, like I just did right there. I don't have no problem with speaking in an unknown tongue, but this is not the word dunamis. This is the word exousia in this text of scripture in the Greek and it means uh, to release, to authorize, to back up, to demonstrate. The reason why the girl uh, uh, who was running after Paul or the seven sons of Siva kept trying to do the miracles that Paul were doing, the demonic principality said, Jesus I know and Paul can I recognize it? But who in the hand sandwich are you? Oftentimes, demonic principalities and powers can't recognize us because we haven't first come under. Too much is out of order in our hearts, minds, and spirits. Somebody say, Come under. The text here says, Behold, I give you authority to trample my God on serpents and scorpions. Here it is. And over all the power of the enemy, over the power of suggestion, over the power of idea, over the power of demonic influence. God's giving you power over that. You That's supposed to be up underneath your feet and so that you can begin now to walk in alignment with God. Jesus had authority and power to give because he first learned how to submit himself, watch this, to earthly authority. My God in here. I ain't got nobody shouting on the stream right now. Jesus, the Son of God, walked in power and authority because he knew how to come under earthly power and authority. Watch the text with me. Look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the text. John kept saying to Jesus, I should be baptizing you. John understood his role, knew his position, but Jesus understood his responsibility. Can I say it again? John knew his role, and he knew his, uh, his positioning, but Jesus understood responsibility. And with both Jesus and John, it wasn't personal between them. It was about the mission. My God in here, preacher, you done said something. If we could ever get to the place where it's not personal, where it's all about God's mission. If we could ever get to the place where my personality ain't got to jail well with your personality. It's about God's mission. If we could ever get to the place where I ain't got to like your shoes and you ain't got to like mine. But we can just understand it's about the mission. Here it is. If we could ever get to the place and we ain't got to be the same color. We ain't got to be in the same ethnic group. We ain't got to speak the same language. But when we all get to every nation every language, every tribe, and every tongue under the same spirit. I believe power will show up in our communities and by this all men will know that you are my disciples by how you love one another. Somebody say this about the mission.
mission. I feel like we're chasing a devil in here. In many of our family affairs, that we can never learn to keep our eyes on the prize and to keep our eyes on mission. If we can never learn to focus on the mission and stop getting caught up in everybody's positions and perspectives and stay mission driven and mission focused. Somebody type it in. Stay mission driven and vision focused. Type it in. Stay mission driven and vision focused. We could break a curse. If we could stay mission driven, God help me preach, and vision focus, we could break a curse in our cities. If we could stay mission driven and vision focus, we could break a curse in our churches. If we could stay mission driven and vision focus, we could break a curse in our country. If we could stay mission driven and vision focus, we could break a curse in our clans. Come on, somebody say amen. Watch the text with me. Watch the text with me. Here it is. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Jesus said, permit it to be so now. Watch him. He says, thus it is fitting. Somebody say, it is fitting. He doesn't say, I'm fitting to cuss you out. <laughs> he says, it is fitting or necessary for us to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus knew he was greater than John, but he came under anyway because it was necessary for God's plan. Necessary for God's plan. Jesus knew. Jesus knew. And John knew that Jesus was greater than him, but he stayed in his lane. I'm stepping on toes, cockroaches, and centipedes are shouting right here. He stayed in his lane and waited on Jesus, John did, to give him permission to fulfill his role. Y'all watch this. John didn't have a, you don't know who I am. I know how to baptize attitude when Jesus was coming into the water. Come on, say amen. Jesus didn't have a, you already know who I am. You better act like you know kind of attitude when he came into the water. Therein lies the issues of so many family dynamics and why so many families go awry because somebody is trying to be recognized. God help me in here. But all of the issues that we face is that somebody wants to feel important. Somebody wants to be heard. Somebody wants to be recognized. And God wants to deliver the church from an inferiority complex and come to understand who we are in Christ Jesus. Jesus, you already the head and you're not the tail. You're already above only and not beneath. You already have been delivered. You already have got your feet shod with the gospel of truth. You already got on the helmet of salvation. But God needs you to put on the breastplate of righteousness and stop letting stuff get into your heart unnecessarily that's being sown by the enemy to get you out of your position. When you get out of position, you miss your commission. And if you miss your commission, the vision then is hindered. Come on, somebody say amen if you can. I'm closing, which gets to the last one, Brother Eric. This gets to the last one. I'm just trying to help somebody this morning. See, Jesus understood that he had to experience submersion and practice submission with John. He understood that so that there could be this last one, succession. All too often, we don't create legacy because we don't understand succession. And Jesus understood, watch this, the plan of Father. He understood that he had to watch this. He was on assignment. Y'all, y'all realize that every time that Jesus spoke, he said, I heard the Father say, or I see the Father doing, and I'm going back to the Father. Jesus stayed mission-driven and vision-focused. He didn't let anything get him off. So much to the point where one of his own disciples had to try to turn, was trying to turn him away. Jesus said, get me behind me Satan and told Peter to close his mouth that I was born to die. I understand my assignment. Come on, somebody holler succession. Come on, somebody holler succession. Here's the issue. Who's coming after you? I know you a great wonder and I know you great and I know you bad and I know you anointed, but who's coming after you? And until we get to a place where we start setting up for succession so that God can extend out his legacy to the third and fourth generation. Here I am in your bloodline. Who's coming after you? Who is going to pick up where you left off? Who is going to keep bringing curse? 
purposes in mom and them house? Who is going to establish wealth in daddy and them house? Who is going to set up a pattern so that God can be seen? You do know we serve a successive generational God, don't you? We serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then here comes Moses. And then here comes Joshua. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And then here comes a Samson. After we get a Samson, God raises up a Samuel. And after a Samuel, we get a David. And after a David, we get a Solomon. Do you hear me? God keeps moving in after generation after generation. Just when the devil thought he had your family, here you come. I came to announce to you that you are a legacy curse breaker. That you are succession in your family. Some things didn't happen to you because you had somebody three generations back who were praying for you. I would dare say the oil on your life. It ain't your oil. I'm preaching like my preaching right now because my grandmother, my mother's mother who was dead and in the grave prayed that her grandson and her sons would be men of God. I'm preaching the way I'm preaching right now because my father's mother walked the floor and prayed until he got alcohol and drugs off his mind. I'm standing the way I'm standing right now because Raymond and Betty Johnson who are not here are on their face praying who is coming God have mercy. So we got to get to a place where we make up our mind that we intend. Oh God, can I preach it like I feel it? We got to get to a place that we decide we're going to give the devil hell, Eric, instead of taking hell, instead of catching hell. I don't know about y'all, but for the rest of my days, I'm trying to give the devil hell. I'm tired of catching hell. And so to the degree that I've got to be submerged, to the degree that I've got to submit and come under, that sets up success. I want my great grandchildren to be looking back and saying, Granddaddy sure paved the way, didn't he? He sure opened the doors, didn't he? He sure made the way out of no way, didn't he? I'm looking for the Lord to do that. Come on, look at this one here. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11, Jesus and John didn't have an attitude with each other. Jesus and John totally understood the idea and the principle behind succession. If you look at Matthew, 3 and verse 11. It's right on the screen behind me. Let me read it. It simply says this. It says that John says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. We get out of here. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. John didn't have an inferiority complex. Whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He said he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I wish I had time to preach right there because we got some Holy Spirit filled churches but somebody that lost their boldness and we need the fire back we need the fire of God back in our shrine to, to when people put out their cigarettes when you come around we need the fire of God back let them call us the Jesus people but we've got the ability and the power to become conduits to heal cancer let them call you the holy roller and the holiness people but when somebody catches a strand of a virus that the shot can heal my bible said if there be any sick among you let them call for the elders of the church and let them lay hands on them that they might be healed. I prophesy right now. We're coming to a day and time you think churches are empty. It's just temporary, baby. Hear me, Pastor. It's just temporary. Hold on and stay faithful to your assignment because the day is coming. I feel it now. The day is coming when there is going to be an outpouring of the Lord's Spirit by way of calamities that are coming on the earth that people have not seen before. And it doesn't matter what the government and the Congress does in terms of money to try to fix it. It doesn't matter how much medicine people get and give. God will have his way because every knee shall bow. Feel it now. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus, somebody give him glory. Somebody say, Jesus, he is Lord. Somebody call to let him fix it. I'm getting out of here this morning. I got more, but we out of time. Listen. 
what gets me about this uh, is that Jesus and John don't have issues with each other. Fabian, I wish uh, that the preachers of the day, we could be like Jesus and John. They understood how to handle family affairs. Jesus and John are both cousins. They come uh, from miracle birth baby moments. And never in the text of scripture, Margaret, anywhere is there an account of Jesus and John doing tent revivals together. Never in the scripture is there anywhere, lady, of Jesus and John holding a three night revival service together. Never anywhere, Mike, is Jesus and John. Doc, how many are you packing, Doc? How many are they coming, Doc? They don't play the Doc game with each other. As a matter of fact, there is never a moment where we see the path of Jesus and John intersect with each other until they get to the water. God help me in here. Until they get to the water. See, at that moment, Mike, can I do some theology? Eternity past became present for them in that moment. They didn't know each other necessarily. They knew they were related. To, but Jesus spent his time in the synagogue in itinerant preaching. John spent his time in the wilderness baptizing people, being a wild man. In other words, Jesus was in the temple, but John was the street corner preacher. But when they got to the water, when they got to the water, a memory moment happened for them. Because the last time that they were in the water, Jesus and John had a memory moment that reminded them of their purpose. Because last time they were in water, they were in a dark place. But in that dark place, John kicked his mother's belly. And John's mother and John got filled with the Holy Ghost. So John is standing in the water, sees Jesus coming and says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Jesus is separate to be so that all things should be fulfilled. And Jesus gets baptized by John when Jesus is greater than John because they have a memory moment. What you saying, preacher? Memory moments will show up if you decide to be submitted enough if you decide to be submerged enough God will give you succession from eternity past to come into your present for your eternity future somebody give the Lord praise and glory right there come on stand on your feet we got to get out of here somebody give the Lord glory I'm away on you for a few seconds watching me on the stream you want to lift up your hands and start worshiping me here Come on, you want to start magnifying him right where you are, watching right at home. God's trying to do something in your family. Could it be, hear me, I'm closing. Could it be that God allowed what was hidden to come to the surface? Yes, Lord. Could it be that God allowed what was hidden from Kirk and his son? The, the issues, the strife, the struggle, he allowed it to come to the surface. And could it be that God wants to use the two of them and to send them around the country as reconciled? In an eternity past for an eternity present. I got a whole lot of teaching and preaching on that, but we ain't got time. God's trying to wake us up. He's trying to get our attention. But we've got to be willing to be submerged and submitted for some session. Come on, say amen if you can. I want to talk to somebody. God's got legacy for you. He, he wants to He wants to minister to you. He wants to touch you. He, he wants to extend himself in your bloodline. But it begins with first knowing Jesus. That's where it begins. It begins with first knowing Jesus. And if you don't know him in the pardoning of your sins, I want to pray for you this morning uh, that you receive Jesus in your heart. It's real simple. The Bible says in 1 John 1 and 9, if you confess your sin, not nobody else's, uh, this is not a moment where you can blame everybody in your family. This is about you. God says if you confess your sin, what you have done, he's faithful and just to forgive you from the condition that causes you to do what you do and forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And it's a simple thing. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. You shall be saved. I want to pray this morning for somebody who's watching me online this morning and somebody in the room this morning. Come on, let's say this together. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner now. I need a savior. Come into my heart. Change me. Save me. 
Lord, I thank you for washing away my past and giving me a brand new present for the promise of your future. I thank you now that I'm your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise for that right there. Listen, I got one more prayer I want to do for some people this morning. I want to pray for those of us here and those of us who are watching. How many of you will agree that you've got some dynamics in your family? Uh, that you need God to touch himself. I, I, I want to suggest to you that some of the dynamics you are experiencing and have experienced, I, I want to dare push the envelope to say that some of them are necessary. Uh, that some of them are necessary to the point because others watching you need to know that they are not the only one. <laughs> they need to know that they are not the only one who's had to walk through this and deal with that. And so sometimes God lets you be an example and a model for others to follow. Does that mean you get it right every time? Absolutely not. There are moments where you're going to mess it up and then you're going to tear it up. But here's the encouragement. I want you to keep trying and keep striving. Amen, somebody? Amen. I, I just want to pray straight to you this morning uh, because your family ain't that bad. There were some families in the scripture that was towed up from the floor, but God used them anyway. Amen. So it's not as bad as you think it is. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for those who are standing under the sound of my voice and, and those connected to the walk of dominion who are worried about the issues and the tributaries that are happening in their families and in their bloodlines. God, I pray that by the power of your spirit, Lord, that you would minister, that you would meet needs, that you would touch them in a special way. Strengthen them. I come up against the accuser of the brethren right now. And I bind all words and ill-spoken thoughts and slander that comes against people to try to cancel them in their families and cancel them on their jobs and cancel them in their call. I bind the work of the devil right now and loose people and set them free to be all that God has called for them to be. I thank you, Lord, for raising up the spirit of a breaker in the walk of dominion like Bill Perizet that will break through like rushing water to help families reconcile with you and reconnect with each other. Thank you for what you have done and are doing and yet shall do. In Jesus name we pray. Come on somebody said amen. amen. Give the Lord a great dominion praise right there. Look here. If you pray with us this morning, I want you to go to Dominion on Demand, our YouTube page. I want you to go there and I want you to look for four videos of uh, New Life in Christ. It's us helping you walk in Dominion. You'll see them on our Dominion on Demand YouTube page. Get in touch with us. We want to stay connected with you and help you grow in your faith. Come on, let's go to these next ones. Anybody like takeaways besides me? Let's do these takeaways. Uh, three. One, two, three. Jesus will fix the affairs of my family. As I follow his footprints. Go ahead. I will follow his footprints by coming under his power. I will follow his footprints by coming under and following his principles. I will follow his footprints by living in his presence. That number two one is the good one right there, I think. Coming under and following his principles. Because we serve, we serve a principle God. God is not a respecter of persons. He is an honorer of principles. And to the degree that we can get his principles aligned in our lives, then we can experience some divine favor, and then God will begin to bring promotion and promises to each one of us. Come on, let's go to the next one. One, two, three, go. Jesus will fix the affairs of my family as I follow his footprints. Go ahead. I will follow his footprints by surrendering my will to his will. Uh-huh. I will follow his footprints by surrendering my words to his words. If we get in moments of intensity, that's when we must grab the Holy Spirit and say, God, help me so that I can speak his words even in moments of difficulty. And I know it's tough and I know it's hard, but we've got to bring ourselves under the subjection of the Holy Spirit and allow him to operate through us. Come on, say amen if you can. Yeah, let's do this last one. Here we go. One, two, three. Jesus will fix the affairs of my family as I follow his footsteps. I will walk in the legacy of his footprints. I will perform greater works in the legacy of his footprints. God wants us to do greater works than even he did when he walked the earth. And so some of the things that we experience, Jesus may not necessarily have experienced them the same way. But if we can begin to walk 
in such a way where we allow God uh, to get glory. Sometimes that causes for us to go under some undue burden and undue strain and undue pressure. But the way that we're able to come through that is keep legacy on our minds. Yeah. If we can understand it's not about us, yeah. but it's about who's coming behind us. Amen. Come on, let's do the last one. In this year of 2021, I am godly. Go ahead. I am godly. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father in Jesus, name, thank you for meeting us here this morning. Thank you for helping us get the technology issues worked out. Bless our team working behind the scenes, God, so that we will be prepared for tomorrow. Thank you for those who tuned in on the various streams and help them share this with, with a friend. We leave from this place. But we never leave from your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody said amen. amen. God bless you, Dominion. You are dismissed. We'll see you tomorrow night on Monday night uh, for a second time around. Share that with your friend. God bless you.